You're listening to The Bombad Generals. General? Oh. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Bombad Generals. It's myself, mm-hmm. Matt, here. I've got Seth and, as a very special guest, we have the best player alive in Legion, the <laughs> next world champion. Yeah. At least that's what he told us before the interview. We've got Eternal RMG all the way from Germany. Hello. Hi, how are you guys? Glad to be here and, you know, letting everyone know I'm the next champion, you know. You, you gotta, <laughs> yeah, you Yeah, are. exactly. You gotta, you gotta we have to proclaim Europe. the good news of Eternal. Now, I realized during that introduction, <laughs> I always think of you as Eternal, but uh, what do you have a real name? Do you want to keep that a secret? I do. I don't. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm Ricabo. That's my name. Cabo? Ricabo. R-E-C-R-D-O. Okay. Well, let me type it. Can I type it somewhere? No. Well, <laughs> no. Discord peeps will know. But yeah. That's Welcome. My name. Okay, there we go. Okay. Welcome. It's nice to put, put a face to the name. A face to a name and a real and a name, name as well. To a name, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's true. So yeah. we, we want to get you on, one, because, you know, I think you're a big personality in the world of legion at least you know yes yeah. well uh, as in the discord guy, if you're in the, discord, in the discord you've yeah. heard of or seen eternal type of message you've seen his sure. really bad hot takes uh, <laughs> and all of that stuff i actually really enjoyed you you took a break from legion for a while mm-hmm. um and then coming back and kind of seeing you discover all the crazy bs that existed in the world of legion that we you know we had known for a few months but you were just like yeah, experiencing I was them first blown. eye. Yeah, exactly. That was that was very funny to me. Uh, but also, I think you have played probably the most uh, games on the Legion ladder of anyone in mm-hmm. existence. And <laughs> Seth and I have talked a lot about the ladder, and we've played a lot of games uh, on it as well. And I think all three of us have really used it as. A vehicle to get good practice in and improve so we wanted to also kind of talk about that so to dive in eternal what what is the legion ladder first of all how does it work well it, it's quite simple you go into the website you sign up you find a lot of people that want to play ladder and if you play against me you get three points so you can slowly <laughs> climb up the ladder <laughs> And eventually go to a top 16 tournament in which I think top one and top two get some cash to, you know, invest into more plastic crack. All courtesy yeah. of Snyder, who I think is bankrolling it with his Invader League winnings. No. So, oh, so, you that know, makes sense. Now I have a, a good reason to, to you know, lose against him if I face him in Invader this season. Because <laughs> no, I was going to say, it'll be sad when you beat yeah. him in Invader yeah, exactly. to win if the, the him, next like, one. It's good because, you know, yeah. the is fulfilling and I'm gonna win you know you know invader and walls and all of that and if I lose yeah. it's on purpose just so the uh, ladder gets you know more money for like you know upcoming seasons for all sure the all the support Snyder thank exactly. you Snyder Thanks. yeah yeah to, to be clear eternal does not run ladder he's just a dude who plays a lot of it so that's why he, we're talking yes, to him. I think what's the highest like ladder count of matches that you've had in the season 50 something, I think. Oh, Lord. 50 <laughs> something. And like, that was probably like... back when it was three months, too. Because these days, I think it's. Oh, no, Two it's months? still three months. No, it's now. about three months. Yeah, yeah. It's still three months. So, 50 matches? that's the important part. <laughs> Gosh. We, we've got. Um, there is a, a tournament at the end of the ladder, but mm-hmm. really, it's not so much about that. It's, it's competitive, but you guys can jump in here. But the way I view the ladder is that it's just a way to, hey, when I've got a free evening, go in looking for game and say, hey, I'm looking for a ladder game. And you're going to have, on average, a bit better quality of opponent. Mm -hmm. You're just going to have people who are expecting to play competitive and trying to practice competitively. Now, there's still a range in there, but if, if I go in and say, hey, I'm looking for a game and I'm trying to practice for Adepticon or LVO, and I get someone who's like, okay, well, this is my third game of Legion and I've never done TTS before. It's not going to be a super useful experience for either of us. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly not really going to make you uh, learn things to, to improve your game. So at the end of the day, ladder is, hey, to, to be- get better, you have to play against good players. And that's yeah. what it is. 
Yeah, exactly. And the way I use it is mostly for like list building because like theory crafting a list and going like, yeah, this could be great and do this and this and that is easy, but you actually need to test it against people that know how to play the game in yep. order to see if the mm. list is actually worth doing. Because if you play against people that, you know, don't see the flaws in your list that you have not seen and don't abuse them, then you, you know, have a, a distorted image of what your list can actually do. And when you play, play against players that are not that experienced, it, you know, it's hard to make sure that your wins are because of the list and not because of the opponent. So when you're mm -hmm. building your list, I find that ladder is always, you know, a good place to start. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And if you are, you know, in, if you're in that newer spot, it's a great place to go to. Yeah, you, you might get crushed a bit at the start, but you'll get to see, hey, here's what, you know, some some really good effective lists are as opposed to maybe you might be more used to some unop more unoptimized janky things and you know starting out nocturnal i think you you have a great success story of i forget which season but like i think you played a whole bunch of games finished dead last on the ladder very next <laughs> season first on the ladder oh, like yeah. by a yeah. mile oh man how what goes into that how days. do you effectively other than just testing lists and maybe that's a big part of it how do you effectively utilize all those reps to really get something out of it i mean i think the most important part for me was first of all learning to use cover and second of all asking my opponents what they think because in ladder most people are people that are experienced with the game and if you're like just starting out and you actually want to get better the best way to get better is to ask for feedback and they usually give you pretty good feedback on either list building or positioning or like the basics that you need to master in order to be able to get the most out of your list and i think that season was mostly me getting destroyed by essentially everyone and then the <laughs> next one was like okay what did i learn okay and then i just pick like one or two lists and i trained them because the issue is my on my first season every time i lost it was like oh, okay new list new list new list and if i'm changing to list that often it's hard to actually improve because every time you, you play you have a new set of variables in your list so it's hard to actually see where you're actually making all your mistakes and second of all you actually learn like the nuances of the list like i remember when i started playing it was like I just trickled my V1s into the enemy. It was like, I lost because, okay, V1 unit, and then the next one. And I just tried to get shots fast instead of optimally playing my army. And that was a mistake, because I think the first faction I started was Empire, and red saves can save you from a lot of punishment that V1s don't have. So when I started playing V1s as if they were like, you know, shores, my whole, I, I lost extremely fast. And I thought, ah, maybe the V1s are not good, but it's just, a matter of playstyle and learning how to actually play your list. So, yeah. When you were swapping lists okay. every time, was it like minor tweaks to the concept or was it like, ah, I lost with droids. Okay, now I'm going to go to Empire. Ah, oh, no, I lost with Empire. Now I'm going to go to clones. Like it's how a, much? I was changing through every faction. Like every game was essentially yeah. a new faction or a new centerpiece, you know? Hmm. There, there hmm. was not very much consistency on my list. So it was hard to actually learn what, what to do because you know, the strategies between lists are very, very different. Between factions are quite different. So, you know, learning was hard. And then I think the second season I did mainly and almost exclusively CIS because I wanted to prepare for Invader League. I, don't know, I think it was like the first Invader League I, I took part in. I thought, okay, when I let's play this, let's play with CIS. And I think the game had, I, we had only like two or three releases at that point. And but even even though even you know though we had, didn't have many options, the lists were, were good. And CIS had had potential, but it had to be played in a very specific way that was very different from all the other factions. And you know that's essentially how how I learned by getting my ass kicked by better players. Yeah, that's that's how it happens for sure. That I is... like, yeah, I like what you're you're saying there as far as really learning the list and learning the nuances and yeah the reason i was kind of asking how much you're changing i think it is okay to you know play a couple games and realize this particular thing isn't working maybe i need to change up some upgrades change out a unit squeeze out an extra activation but you're still staying with the same bones mm -hmm. of the list and then you can really learn it and that's the great thing when we talk about volume there's so many variables in legion there's the map there's the missions all of that so you can practice, you know, breakthrough against this list, and then you're practicing key positions against this list, and 
they're very different games. So if you're really trying to put a list through the ringer, you need reps, reps, reps. Yeah, for sure. And but I think that's important as reps is like to try to analyze your your gameplay. Because what I sometimes do is just, you know, when I am losing or when I lose a game, also when I lose, like I try to find out why I lost the game, which specific because there is always like a breaking point and watch you can make a lot of mistakes but you can still have a good chance of winning and then you make one mistake too many and then the game is essentially unwinnable and it's always i mean i've always found that the best it's also good to be mindful of your mistakes when you do when you do the reps because otherwise you just spend playing a lot of hours without improvement because you don't know what you're doing wrong you're just kind of trying mm -hmm. to brute force the problem and that mm -hmm. i've also done <laughs> it yeah. work yeah the whole point of practicing is like and playing is like to improve and just like like you said before like i think getting feedback from your opponent is like key um just because like a whole different perspective because everyone views the game differently and everyone plays the game differently like having that other perspective kind of just helps you um mm -hmm. learn and grow as a player yeah. i most, think most you know, people in the lab oh, are actually quite nice so you know they, most they people are <laughs> yeah, yeah yes. like 95 percent at least i'd say yeah so don't be you know don't be intimidated by the fact that it's vaguely competitive similar with invader you know the best way again to learn is to get crushed by people but <laughs> the you know the i think there's the old adage oh like practice makes permanent or practice makes perfect but the the one i prefer is practice makes permanent right so if you're doing the same things over and over you might not be getting perfect you're just gonna hardwire in certain tendencies and you have to really force yourself sometimes to get out of the comfort zone mm -hmm. i remember for me i was wanting to you know learn to play aggro lists better so i you know took whatever anakin triple wookies or whatever and was, was trying to play that and forcing myself to get out of my comfort zone sure i lost some a lot of games doing it but you're, you're going to learn more about how those lists function, because if you just say, oh, I don't really know how to do that, I'm going to fall back and just play play gun lines, then you don't learn, you don't get better. Even if I don't eventually play aggro lists, knowing how, what they need to do to do better is going to help me in the future. So it's a good opportunity to kind of counter scout as well to, to shore up your weaknesses. No, yeah, for, for sure. And I do think that there are certain lists which can help you with a lot of important core mechanics in Legion. And I think B1s, like in general, like B1s spam, is actually quite a useful, a useful list to just train with because it teaches you to be very conservative with your uh, core units and actually strike at the same time, which is a lot more effective just, than just trickling down, which for every other faction is something that you can get away with because red says or like dodge spam or stuff like that with cis you misplace your b1 unit it's out and every mm -hmm. time you lose more v1s they start getting worse and worse and worse and worse to a point where like the game is unwinnable just because you misplaced a few units here and there and i think that actually helped me a lot it's you know focus on cis first and then go on to other factions because like the core of how to move and use my core units in a way that they don't get just you know plinked to death was actually very important and let me use other lists in a more efficient way than before because it's you know as empire you just roll good roll bad you don't get punished that hard when you misplay interesting but i'm True. recommending factions for for newer players usually i say oh just anything but cis <laughs> just because it's so it's weird and nebulous and and very particular but would you, you right. recommend it or not i think if you're just starting with the game i think you go empire because it's very punishing and you're just learning the core mechanics and then, you know throwing a lot of dice at distance is fun i think then you should give cis like a try once you you know you know your basics and want to get better because you can can you learn how to do savers which is a big part you do how to learn positioning that's important and you know using cover which i still struggle to this day and after that i think the rest of the factions are kind of similar but i think like for, for like those those very core part of legion which is positioning i think i think cis is quite quite good and that's the beauty of tts i guess too is that you don't have to own them you can try oh, yeah. that's true yeah try before you buy or try with no intention of ever buying and just say hey it's online i'm gonna play droids but when I go out to the local game store, I'll play yeah. whatever else I own. 
one yes. of the reasons we still, why. We, yeah. Sorry, to go on. No, I was just kidding. We still recommend buying Legion just to keep the game Yes, afloat. I do still recommend. <laughs> yes. 100%. No, for sure. The game is, is, is more fun IRL. Like, that, that's, at least mm-hmm. in my case, having played a few games on TTS, I can say, you know, IRL, the game is, is it's always more fun. It's always more fun to just to grab your big blob of B1s and just shove them all, you know, into the enemy. <laughs> it's just nothing beats that. But, but yeah, no, like actually one of the reasons why I was changing faction softness because when I started, I played on TTS was mostly to see which faction do I buy into. Because, you know, I was still mm-hmm. in college, didn't have enough of bu- too much of a budget and thought, well, I don't want to buy into something that I don't like to play. So I just, you know, essentially tried a bit of everything, which in hindsight might not have been the best thing to do in ladder. But it's but that's what I love about TTS. You get to try things before you buy them. And if you're not if you're in a budget, it's you know amazing. Mm-hmm. And you can play people from all over the world. I've gotten yeah. to play you a number of times. It's how I met Seth. Like I get it. It's not as you say. It's definitely not as fun as it is in real mm-hmm. life. But the TTS mod for Star Wars Legion is is very good. And once you actually get some reps in. How, how, how quickly would you say you can finish a game in TTS? Full game, six to eight, depends finish. on the opponent, but I go mm-hmm. fast. In between, two hours is pretty easy, yeah. easy to do on, on TTS now. Because, I mean, yeah. that, that's true, like, the mod team is just excellent. If I've seen yeah. game and mods for other games and for, like, other tabletop games, and it's just not as smooth. Like, the game is, is unbelievable how... Uh, user friendly the mod can be and how smooth games can go once you know what's what yeah the first one might take totally four hours to to do a full game but mm-hmm. don't be discouraged it you know especially if you get some key bindings in some hotkeys yeah. all of that it's going to move fast for you indeed yeah it does create so- one bad habit and it's and it's the range bands because I remember the first time mm. I played IRL, I was like, okay, I see more than this is now. I need a range one. I need my button with my, you know, rainbow colors to tell me how far away <laughs> yeah. things are. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, we always try to encourage people in real life to measure all the time. And it's so easy to do that in DTS, but like it's actually a task to do in real life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To one measure. of the faster things for sure yeah. on online. Now, yes. We've talked a lot about TTS ladder. I, I feel like now is a good time. Let's transition. Let's talk more about you, uh, Ricardo. So how you, you've touched on it as far as you know playing droids and and all of that. But how would you describe your play style? Certain focus pieces that you like to do, or maybe just like playing generics. You know what? If you had to do your profile as a player, how would you describe yourself? Ah. <sighs> Oh, great question. Honestly, it's quite erratic at times. It depends on what I'm feeling at the time. But it usually it's about dice volume and flashy pieces. Like I love saber users. I love units like that are not as flashy, but like Aiden, which can just, if played right, steal the game. And well, mm-hmm. now Dark Troopers because they throw like a a jillion dice but in general i think those are the things i like the most about about legion in general it's just having good dice volume it's having one or two turns where everything comes together and just takes up it steals the game from the opponent that's why the least i've been you know testing right now is essentially uh double b2 uh, jedi which is just Oof. nasty with the new climb rules if the map is right b2s can be disgusting because you can just climb over an obstacle shoot Use the uh, uh, super tactical droid three people to recover, move, shoot again, and you've thrown so many dice that against anything aside from dark troopers, you are in an excellent spot even if they just die. And Jedi always come in handy if played right. Like I think Mo has won me so many games that I didn't deserve to win just because like they can be so dominant if played right. Mm-hmm. So what I'm hearing is you like lots of attack dice, lots of wounds, and playing lots of games. Yeah. Just quantity like everywhere. Exactly. Quality yeah. not important. That's why I don't do clones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also because my red dice are terrible. Or I don't know if it's you know clearly biased, but every time I play an army with red dice, I just roll blanks. Like my, my army still still thinks I'm playing B1s, and that just pisses me off to no end. So with B1s, and the beauty of the B1 is like it's so bad that you can ne- you can never be disappointed. You know, 
Mm. Whenever I see hits, mm. I'm like, okay, hits equals death. But when I roll a save, it's like, nice. Compared to when I was playing clones uh, a while back, and it's like, okay, it's probably a 50-50, and then I roll badly, and it just feels like disappointing. Well, we be, yeah. well when you play CIS, other than your you know main characters, which you can maneuver around, there is not much disappointment going on around. It's just all, all, all the feelings are just happy feelings. There's Makes nothing sense. but upside. There's exactly. nothing but upside when you've got droids versus a clone or a Mandalorian. Sure, they can block everything. There's upside, but there's a lot of downside yeah. as well. And when you do like a lot of reps with the list, it can get really frustrating. Frustrating because you tend to f- over-focus on like the bad rolls and other than the good rolls. And that mm-hmm. really does affect like the quality of the games that you that you have. And the reason why B1's roll broke. So how important as a as a droids player, how important is perfect order to control for you? If you're playing the B2s list, I assume it's maybe not the most important thing. You know, it but, is always. Like droids, yeah. you I mean, and it's maybe a bad habit, but I just cannot go without perfect order control. Like as long if I have two type of units in the back, I take improvised orders every time. Like in that list, I think I have mm-hmm. improvised orders because at the end of the turn I always have either my STD or Ventress in the back. And like the idea of, rolling, of pulling a 50-50, I just, it just kills me every time. Oh yeah, Ventress. You, yeah, you gotta have perfect order yeah. control with Ventress for sure. Exactly. Even with I, Maul, I think, yeah. Yeah. Well, if Maul, if you have a face up on Maul well, though, yeah, like yeah, the more tradition, going a more traditional, sure. like, hey, I put a face up on Maul and who knows Coordinate. about the rest of my bag. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but no, I think order control is like, I think every faction loves it. But because CIS can get it for like so easily, I think it's just always a mistake not to get it because at most it costs you 10 points to get an uplink and get like most of your army out of the back. You know, it's pretty mm-hmm. easy to get a clean back compared to other factions. So I think, you know, why not do it? Because it's it's always bad when you get a mistimed piece out of the back. And you know, yeah, welcome yeah, to our world. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, nah, never happens. Like when I play Empire, it's like, okay, sure, I get my core pieces inside the, the uh, outside, like uh, I get order tokens to my core pieces, and I can time them right. But sometimes I just want my mortar to go a bit earlier, and it doesn't. Or like sometimes I can't get something out of position, but I can't. Well, with CIS, maybe your activations are not as strong to be that impactful, but throwing suppression hit and there, it's it's always relevant. Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel like it's Sometimes when I have a turn with per- perfect order control, you know, such as the Yoda three pip, I'm so used to not having that. It's a mental mm. tax thinking, oh, I have, I have perfect what order I control. Do? I make the decision versus usually you can not think and just say, hey, I'll let the, I'll let fate decide for me. Is, is that a mental drain or you can handle it? You've, you've practiced enough that it's sturdy. No, no problem. It is, it is still, I, I, I always struggle with just not throwing my, my big dice piece early just because it's like, you know, I want to throw dice and it's always a struggle to just keep it back and mm-hmm. just say like, no, I want, I'm going to wait and I'm going to throw the B ones first. That it, it, that's always a mental drain, but also making the decision of which unit you want to go with instead of just, you know, letting uh, fate decide because sometimes you, you go a bit too early with a wrong p1 and then you miss a, a shot in the future that you could have seen coming you know it, it's it's a, the turn can be a lot, a lot more taxing if you don't have a plan in mind especially the later turns of the game where like all the small decisions matter it can take a while to decide what to go with and that is one of like the most important and most difficult parts of playing cis is knowing what to do when Mm. Do you have your eyes on a different, like a faction switch in the future? Having played Ooh. so much, are you bored of CIS, or do you never get bored of it? I mean, I Ewoks. Been... <laughs> Ewoks. Ooh, Maybe. yeah, that's volume. That's a lot of volume right yeah. there. I've been, I've always been like swapping here and there between Empire and CIS. I think my first Invader played CIS, and the next one I played Empire, then Empire again, then CIS, because both factions have the things I like. So. Honestly, I don't see myself swap- swapping to either Shadow Collective, Rebels, or Gar. Because what I don't like about Rebels is like it's the too concentrated on the f- a few focus pieces, and I don't really like the fact that you don't have a, back- a decent backbone. You know, like CIS might have only B1s, but if timed right, they can do a very decent job of just winning the game because 
you have more more wounds so they have dice while empire has a you know very strong core line and with rebels i mean with veterans it feels nice but in general i just struggle with just having like two or three core pieces and then the rest being useless you know it just doesn't doesn't spark joy <laughs> no and with no i uh, hear Republic, you there the red dice always come to haunt me so for the sake of my mental health i just won't <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's that's a big swap yeah, yeah rebels yeah. are in a weird in between where they're not they're kind of like b1s where you want to go in with no expectations but they're not as cheap or as plentiful yeah exactly and that can be painful the one That's revelation true. that I played and I really enjoyed was Echo Base Defenders with Commander uh, Commander Luke. Because playing that 3 pip and just, you know, setting up five standbys with a single force push, that was just nice. Yeah, <laughs> seems good. Oh, poor Commander Luke and the deflect oh. changes. Oh, oh, poor well, Speaking Rebel of period. changes, actually, you know, rumor has it we might be seeing uh, an update sooner rather than later. What's your wish list for droids to to get them into a better spot as far as some things you might want to get raised up? I mean, honestly, I feel like droids are in a good spot in general. I feel like maybe you could drop the price of the B2s a little bit because they're a bit too expensive, I feel, right now, especially with, like, you know, tax order control. Droid deck has definitely something that make, to make them useful because right now you just take a spider droid. And even even with the LOS changes, you haven't played around with anything like that using Droidicas as blocking or, or mobile uh, cover. I mean, it works, but movement is always an issue because you can't really move through. And I'd rather have a spider droid through which I can move yeah. and I can just hide and has you know armor on top of, of cover. Mm. But for CIS, honestly, I feel like they're in a good spot. I, I don't feel like. There is anything specific that you can change about CIS to make them better, other than making Grievous Scourge 3 tactical and making him just better because he's so bad. I was I was waiting for that. If yeah, not, I was going to tell you to play Grievous in the, yeah. in the latter three yeah, levels. I've, I've but... tried. I've tried because I, I really because like I, the, the mini I, I, I built a kit bash with a bunch of uh, MacLagard stuff and other things, and it looks really cool. And I actually want to put it on the table, but every time I do, I'm like. Hmm. I could be playing Mole instead, you know, for the same mm, point. Yeah. It's yeah. like, nah. Especially yeah. with the scale changes, he's not that fast anymore. His dice are in grey. Like, I feel like the one people needs to have, like, Surge and Blast. And he needs a Recover card, and he needs Tactical or something, and more Courage or Indomitable. Like, something, because, like, he's technically flexible because he has three slots that you can fill with different things but uh but all the slots are always you know pre-taken by strict orders and endurance and stuff like that he's not a very flexible piece he needs the op vader treatment where you do like three or four buffs and then up his cost by a whole lot yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. grievous should feel I, the, yeah. I, I think that the way they treated vader is just great because he went from being a terrible piece either commander or like operative to being essentially one of the better uh, force users i feel at least mm -hmm. he, yeah, he, he, he definitely always, is <laughs> it's always rough seeing vader on the other side of the table unless you have like i don't know ventress because makash is just nuts but it is just eight eight health seven health master of evil with a new you know the new rules it's just no this is just good yeah yeah well so i know all three of us with ladder there's a tournament at the end of the season each one of us are playing in that tournament oh, i'm not no. trying to like pick your brain i'm not trying to like we already have oh, our list you know you, our you list may. you may i'm, I'm but, super open <laughs> but i want to i want to pick your brain I would tell us about the list you built for this tournament and just kind of like your thought process through it well my the first list that i wanted to play was Iden dark troopers which i think it's a much better list than people will expect because you have Iden, it means you, the, the enemy always has to come to you, meaning that Dark Troopers can just stay hidden. Uh, you have something to deal with uh, vehicles and other Dark Troopers because if you, I think in the list you can get three aims every turn, which is essentially two crits almost every time. And Inferno Squad is actually quite nuts on the three pip because you can act with you fire support with a mortar. You can pretty easily get just nine hits with Pierce one some, into something or a lot of crits, and it just does a lot for um, killing other 
Dark Troopers. But I think it's just a very good overall list that you can play. But I don't know if it felt like too mainstream because it had Dark Troopers. I thought I wanted to do something different. And another list that I had in mind that it's also, I think, quite good is the B2's Jedi list that I, that I uh, mentioned. In this case, it's just, I think, Super Tactical Droid, two B2's, Ventress, and a Magna Guard. Which is like, for CIS, it's oddly a very high amount of very high quality units. Yeah. And I think it will work fine because of with the pass mechanic, nine activations is actually viable. And, and I don't mind because Ventress can get her point cost back in a single turn. If you happen to shoot her, if I you know, get a shot off, get a wound or get something off when I'm moving here into position, it's not that problematic because I just played the one pip and I can pretty much kill whatever I want that turn because it's eight dice, a lot of dodges and Makashi. And then you're busy killing her and then I have Magna Guards coming behind her. And if I have to, and the idea with the list is essentially you plink with uh, uh, B1 so to get something through and just uh, set the B2s behind cover, give them tokens, move them out of cover and blast something, whatever it is. Next round, play the 3-pip and move forward and attack something again. And like that means that for two, one or two turns, all the firepower is going to be on the B2s. And even if they die, the Magna Guards are coming right behind her and with the Magna Guards comes Ventress. And just having a Jedi at the end after probably having killed two activations is just very strong. And, you know, there's always B1 to cap objectives and stuff like that. Yeah, you don't see a lot of nine act droid lists, but you are packing, yeah, Ventress, two B2s, and a Magna Guard. That's a lot of good threat saturation. It's a lot yeah, of beef right there. It is, Even it, it is, up quickly, it, hopefully. It is actually quite beefy. Mainly because I have extra, I have a, a scanner that works for Ventress, but it's also excellent for the Magna Guards. So giving Magna Guards with Retinue Dodge, Scanner, and Strategize means it's three dodges, and I can just throw it out. Okay, sure, I might go, you might go after I do, but it's still essentially five hits that I get to unite within cover, plus they have situational awareness. So like, you, will have, you will struggle a lot getting damage through them. And if I, you know, next turn, I don't care, okay. If you kill one or two models, they get into melee, they're, they're a nuisance and they're annoying you already. And that just gives space for Ventress or the B2s. And I think the list has six impact naturally, two guns with critical one and Ventress. So I ah, should be enough. decent enough, not enough. <laughs> against, you know, at least one Dark Trooper. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, one yeah. Ventress could potentially take out for sure yeah. with a bit of support. I, I hope we get matched up at some point because I do I want to get a game in against Ventress. I have not had the, the pleasure yet, and I'm still very curious. Yeah, having as played to how all exactly. force users, she's the hardest force user to play by far. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet. Man, harder than Yoda. Wow. Yeah, I mean, yes, because Yoda, it's hard to it's hard to play the army around Yoda, but Yoda itself is pretty straightforward. While Ventress, it's it's rough because you want to get her in to do some damage, but five hit points is deceptively low, uh, you know, amount of, of hit points. And it's true. A bad movement, a, mm. a map which you know sidelines are too open or like too much distance between objectives, between cover pieces, means that you can you know get damage very fast and lose a lot of your your potential. Yeah, and people this, always said, oh. Uh, CIS Maul is basically five wounds or whatever because he has to wound himself. But it's actually having five wounds is very different because Maul, hey, if start of the round, it's a little open and they do a chip shot on him and one wound, great, they've activated... Um, yeah, Julio. Not Gemso. Yeah. So, um, oh, what is what is the Maul act uh, mastery? Julio. Julio mastery, yes. It activates <laughs> Julio for you and... You know, you still have five HP, but if they do that to Ventress, she actually has five HP, so now exactly, she's down to exactly. four. And yeah, but you've like, got the Medroid to, to help with that. Yeah, Maul with, you know, move, move, force, push, standby gives you like the extra four inches that you get from that move, and the standby are so important to just, you know, get him into somewhere safe. Well, Ventress doesn't have that range. She cannot, okay, move, 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 force, push, but good opponents are not, not just going to give you the option to do that with an unactivated unit. Mm, so yeah. getting her into, into position is very, very rough. 
and that's why you know dodge, putting a lot of dodges in her and in general having things that take of attention away from her are very important because i i played the list a similar adventures list which was uh bsds with ion spiders and you know mm -hmm. you want adventures and because they didn't draw enough attention ventress always had a rough time getting anything done well i feel okay. like if you you have another short range threats that have to be dealt with like b2s or magnas she gets a much better chance of getting doing disgusting things because you know even with the low act count having those four things coming at you simultaneously means that something gets to go through and it's probably not going to be ventress because players will focus on her because she's disgusting but B2 is just recover shooting, recover shooting your army. It's a disgusting amount of dice. B2s are basically dark troopers, kind of light. They're dark troopers yeah. light. Light dark troopers, yeah, yeah. If yeah, they close to range two and just start <laughs> blasting, then yeah. uh, it's a bad time. Yeah. How often would you say you go with the Makashi uh, version of uh, Asajj instead of the bounty hunting bounty bounty hunting version? Is it Every time yeah. you're going Makashi? I think or... I go Maka Every time there is something that is immune pierce, I go Makashi. If it's impervious, even if it's Mandos, I usually don't do it mostly because, I mean, math wise, it's the difference is not that big between pierce two with impervious and pierce one with Makashi. Well, Bounty is just disgustingly good at either stealing games, because it's always a secondary win condition. Like, if Ventress has Bounty, she can do nothing for five rounds. And just do one kill one unit on round six and win the game. Mm. That's it. And because I think she can be panicked on round six and still, you know, get the bounty uh, victory points. Yep. 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 Yeah. So can. you can just go in, get all the dodges, get everything, kill, and just you know, wait. Which is amazing, and also it's good for sorting out characters that might want to get close for support. Because the closer Ventress gets into that character, the further back they have to move. So you can essentially zone out a unit out of their army, which is quite strong. Which is one of the reasons why I think Bounty, in general, is such a strong keyword. It's so good. It is so really good. good. Yeah. And like, yeah. But so is it Mikashi. also comes on good units. Yeah, and that's yeah. one of the reasons I love Ventress. She's very flexible. Like, mm -hmm. because I used to play for a time Mole uh, Cat Bane before the rework, and that was disgusting because having bounty as an option always gave me an out to win a game that I might have lost by a mistake of mine or just bad, bad luck. Mostly bad luck. I don't make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Design wise, <laughs> I want more stuff like Ventress and more stuff yeah. loadout. More just more things yeah. where you can flex, yeah. change the flavor of the unit. Yeah, because I mean, not only are the like makes a unit more playable because like unit and that's one of the reasons I like Iron as well. Like loadout makes her very flexible to face different threats and you can build a list with that unit in your, in your as a centerpiece and still you know face and, and not be countered by one specific list just as hard you have options and you know mm. ventress is just i, I guess mm. yeah. honestly the one people with makashi just is so nuts because my issue has always been how do i have enough things to kill enemy force users and ventress is like the only one answer because mm -hmm. i think if you mm -hmm. time it well you can last first uh, and kill even commander vader if you do piercing it right, force cool. users is very scary very, yeah. <laughs> they very do good. not want that yeah yes. at all for sure and bound even more so with the deflect changes but yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah no those deflect the deflect changes i mean i understand why they did them but it feels so rough on certain force users like luke mm-hmm because mm -hmm. like, yeah. like, are you always she, taking into the fray on um, Asajj as a result? Always. Yeah. Always. <laughs> yep. So, you know, weak. That that yeah. one surge has saved me so many times. Like, it's it's not it's it's not worth not taking. The second slot, I think, is more flexible, but I'm still a fan of offensive push because, you know, eight black die are not always as reliable as you would like them to be. Mm -hmm. And oh, having no. that option on the one paper on an engagement turn is always good so you don't have to spend your dodges into, you know, uh, fixing things that you don't really necessarily want to fix. Yeah, how yep. how aggressive are you spending the dodges if you get punched? You know, you're sitting in melee, someone punches you, you've got a few dodges. Do you spend them all the time for defense or do you try to save them for offense to, shoot, to hit back? It depends back? on how likely I am to die by that hit, you know? 
If I get five hits and I have five hit points, I don't trust my red dice. I always, you know, throw one dodge away just to make sure that not even variants can, you know, kill me right then and there. But mm -hmm. other than that, that, I think it's mostly enough. And because like Ventress is relatively cheap, you can make your points back quite easily. So, you know, you don't have to be overly worried about a like a character like Duke or Yoda, which you want to survive until round six to get all the value you can. She can just, you know, attack twice and it's already more than enough most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. Good. Well, we, we like to pick the brains of CIS players here because <laughs> neither <are> not. myself <laughs> or Seth uh, play it. So whenever we get one on, it's it's good to give a little CIS content. Eh, yeah. You know, <laughs> that's that's all I've got for questions. Yeah. Seth, no, do you have anything it. you? I uh, know that's I'm, oh, I learned a ton. Yeah. Ricardo, do you have any shout outs you want to do or uh, trash talk? Any any players you want to to go after? <laughs> anything to say to Luke I Cook? Yeah, oh, I is, mean, is it coming for his title? Uh, you know, upcoming former world champion Luke Cook, we'll need to watch out. Mm -hmm. And I would like to have, you know, trash talk Snyder, but sadly, as the one that, you know, keeps the ladder league running, which is essentially most of what I do in Legion, I can't. So, you know, he gets a shout out instead. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I think we'll try to link the uh t t the tts mod for legion uh in this episode same with Down in the description the, yep the discord uh because that's where you're gonna want to go to find the ladder sign up look for games all of that and uh, yeah, we can we can toss your list in there so if people want to try out the the uh the Asage threat saturation yeah uh, they can so thank yeah. you very much thanks Pleasure for having you on yeah, and I'll see you around after I beat you in love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks Already. for listening to the Bombad yeah. Generals. Stay Gungan. This has been the Bombad Generals. Listening to Bombad Generals is not scientifically proven to make you a better Legion player. Side effects may include bad dice rolls, misfigures, aim losses, bankruptcy, divorce, vomiting, and sudden death. Ask your doctor if Bombad Generals is right for you.